Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Glad to have this man back. He's the former HUD secretary. He, of course, world-renowned neurosurgeon, Dr. Ben Carson. Ben, how are you? Good to see you. Doing well, Joe. Good to be with you. It's always a, a pleasure to have you. I want to get into Detroit, your former stomping grounds. I was in Michigan for a long time covering news in that great state. I think that state is teetering this this time around for November. So Joe Biden's spending a lot of time there. He's going to Wisconsin. He's going to Ohio. He's going to Pennsylvania, places that he knows he has to win if he's going to win in November. I want to get into that very, very in-depth in a moment. But we've got to start with your former boss, the guy I voted for, the guy I will vote for again, guy I've interviewed 14 times, Donald Trump in New York City on a case that, Ben, as an intelligent I, I consider myself reasonably intelligent. Nothing on your scale. Don't even I, – I get it. But – Having said that, as an intelligent person looking at this, there's no case. This has been a waste of time, and it's a way to keep him off the campaign trail, no? Well, that's what it's all about, uh, selling his reputation and keeping him off the trail. However, I think it's backfiring. Uh, his fundraising has increased. Uh, his popularity has increased. And I think the American people are smarter than the left gives them credit for. They recognize that if this is allowed to succeed, that is obliterating your political opponent, utilizing the government agencies, this will not be the United States of America anymore. And I think most Americans ac- actually understand that. I agree with you, but you've got a judge that is not allowing in uh, a- any evidence. The exculpatory information that this guy Robert Costello has was not allowed in. The judge was <laughs> threatening contempt because he gave him the side eye. Then he gave him the side eye, and a guy got in trouble for that in court. This is, uh, you can't make it up. This is worse than any court drama I've ever seen, but I feel in my heart of hearts, it's wrong. He's going to be convicted of something. How do you think it's going to turn out? Well, I suspect that uh, there'll be at least one juror who will recognize what's going on. Well, I hope so. Won't be manipulated. But even if that's not the case, and even if he is convicted, it'll be overturned. There's just no way this is going to stand. So it's just wasting time, though. That's the problem, wasting precious time and resources. Can you give me your thoughts on a guy like Michael Cohen? I know that you've been inside people's brains, but I don't know that you know the actual function of their mind as well as you know the, the, the anatomy of it. But having said that, this guy had just admitted yesterday to stealing $60,000, grand larceny, but the statute of limitations is up so he can't be tried on that, which is garbage. Um, but he admitted to that. He, had, he lied several times, so much so he was perjured. He is a convicted felon, went to prison. He's con- completely contradicting himself in every turn. And then he walks out of court and tells somebody he's thinking about running for Congress. Ben, <laughs> help me understand how somebody can be that much in, in la-la land that he thinks any of that's possible. Well, you know, some people just have these kinds of personalities, uh, sociopathic-like uh, activity. They don't recognize the bad in themselves. They only see it in other people. And uh, they can be very convincing sometimes. They're, they're frequently very intelligent individuals. Uh, I believe he's probably a very intelligent individual, but uh, does not see the bad in himself. He only sees it in other people. I mean, you're right. He's very good. He's very convincing when he told me he stole $60,000. I believe him. <laughs> you know, but, but he's the same guy. That it's almost like a split personality because you and I both knew him. Well, I didn't know him, but we knew of him in the day when he was representing President Trump. And he would go on every show and defend him to the death. And now he's the, the worst ogre in, in the world. Just your opinion on this. You don't want to give opinion. Fine. But, but your opinion on this, it seems as though people that Trump did not give appointments to – Anthony Scaramucci, who lasted 11 days. Now now you got this guy, Cohen, who I think thought he was going to be the AG or something else. It's almost like they're, and, and women, don't get mad at me, it's almost like they're women scorned. It's almost as if they've got to get back the bad guy who didn't fulfill what they thought a promise was. Well, that uh, is certainly the case. And what uh, Trump doesn't boast about is what he's done for a lot of people. You know, uh, those of us who know him, know a lot of the stories about things that he's done for people. He is a very kind individual uh, when he's not being attacked. Uh, well, he really is. I mean, he's from the same part of the world as my mother, Jamaica, Queens, New York. They are the kindest people on the planet, but as soon as you give them the side eye, if you will, it's time to fight. Let's roll them up. Let's go. And he's going to hit back harder than he got hit. Then the media ignores the initial the initial intrusion from the other party, right? Uh, absolutely. Well, they have their own agenda, uh, the media does, which, uh, as I've said before, is very sad because they don't realize that the first thing Marxist governments do is they completely control the media. 
So they're digging their own grave, and, and they don't have enough insight to realize that. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson. Make sure you follow him everywhere. I believe it's uh, Secretary Carson. It might be Secretary Ben Carson at on X. I follow you. You don't follow me. Ben, listen, no guilt. Whatever. You know what I mean? I thought we were friends, but uh, go follow him everywhere. Get his brand new book. It's called The Perilous Fight that I want to get into in a moment. When we're talking about what's happening in November, and again, you're somebody who is trained in this field, in the medical field. When you watch Joe Biden out there on the campaign trail, just making stuff up, lying about no water in line in Georgia, lying about starting. He started his life in the civil rights movement when he was 15. Ben, that would have been 1957 when most of the nation didn't know about the civil rights movement until the early 60s. Selma wasn't until 1965. Civil Rights Act of 1964 was, of course, in 64, Voting Rights Act in 65. He's lying about that. He's lying about starting his his political career on the porch of a black neighbor that was arrested. He got arrested on the porch. But what are we watching here? Because either he's making it up and wants us to believe that he's somebody he wasn't, or he's having these false memories because of his age. Well, I think he actually believes this stuff. Really? He convinces himself that it's true. And very much like uh, like Cohen, he can see the bad in others, but he doesn't see the wrong in himself. Uh, so he will continue along that line uh, as his mental status continues to deteriorate. And the people around him know that his mental status is not adequate. And that's why they won't subject him to a mental status exam. If, if they were con- confident that he was sharp as a tack, as some of them say, it would be no problem whatsoever. Well, when he's asked about his age, he always says, watch me. And I'm like, well, I am watching you. That's why we're asking you about your age. That's the issue. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson. I was buoyed by uh, the, the fact that some Morehouse graduates turned their backs on him. I thought that was a proper, um, peaceable protest. Uh, he was out there lying, getting a, 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 an honorary doctorate for no reason whatsoever. This is the guy that said he didn't want a racial jungle for his kids. This is the guy that said, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. This is the guy that said, they're going to put you all back in chains. This is the guy who actually was the author. This is real. Was Strom Thurmond of punishing black people more than white people for similar crimes in 1994. Are black Americans waking up? It looks like the young ones are. Well, I'm very pleased to see that some of them are starting to actually think for themselves and not yeah. just led by the nose. Uh, a lot of the older people still are, are in that mindset where if it's a Democrat, it must be okay, it must be good for me. But uh, for people to analyze for themselves and see what's happening, black Americans are no different than any other Americans. You know, they feel the pinch when they go to fill up their car at the gas station. They feel the pinch when they go to the grocery store. They see that they don't feel as safe in their own neighborhoods because of all the criminal activity and the repeat offenders being let out. You know, the list goes on and on, and they feel it too. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson. I, I mean, honestly, I feel very, very good about the the mistake that this that Alvin Bragg made in New York. And here's what I mean. He's kept Donald Trump in New York City for a long time, so much so that young Black people in Harlem showed up to just a random Trump shows up. Trump, look at me. They're taking selfies. They're taking videos. Trump, I love you, Trump. We love. He is literally in the neighborhood he needs to be in. I I hope he would have gone there anyway, whether he was on trial or not. But then he's going to have a big rally at Madison Square Garden, where, again, you've got a, a block in New York City that is so deep blue, but you know you can get them to vote Republican, just look at Rudy Giuliani in the early 90s, if if the, the time is right. Ben, is the time right? I mean, him being in New York City this much is working against Joe Biden, I think. The the time is right. And and a lot of minorities in particular really are being attracted to him because he is of the mindset that I want to do things that work for everybody. I don't want to take this group versus that group. I just want people just want fairness. They want decency. And that's what he represents. And also, you don't have to ever wonder about what he's thinking. He's an open book, and that's a very rare thing in a political figure. It really is. Uh, It's Dr. Ben Carson, of course, former HUD secretary. Um, The new book is called The Perilous Fight. I want to get into that in a second, but I'm not going to ask you if you want to be or you're thinking about being. I'm going to ask you this, Ben, and hopefully we're friends. I think you'll give me an answer. If offered, would you accept the position of vice president? I would certainly uh, pray about it, talk to my family, and I seriously would want to do everything I possibly can to help save our country. Well, I appreciate that answer because I believe you. I know that you. I, I know that you would do it if President Trump said you're the guy. Um, 
I want my audience to understand why you decided on HUD secretary last time. Because going in, I thought HHS, um, I thought may, maybe the Surgeon General, although I don't think that's a big enough, more important, uh, important enough job for you. Then you went with HUD, and I know why, because we've talked about this before. Can you tell my audience again why you decided housing and urban development made sense? Because I was uh, very tired of seeing the poor and neglected people of our country being taken advantage of. And I wanted to do things to give them self-respect and self-determination and not just dependency on the government. And I thought it would be easy to gain a lot of colleagues who believe in that on the Hill, on the Hill but it wasn't, uh, particularly on the, on the left side of the aisle. They don't seem that interested in getting people out of poverty and creating right. efficiency. Well, well, you did something that I thought was, was extraordinary. And correct me if I get the name wrong, Enterprise Zones, right? Uh, the uh, it, it was where you had the partnership between private and public. It wasn't a bunch of public money. You actually told the local, you know, uh, uh, people who had the money who to invest. You invest the money. We'll join with you. Let's build yep. it together, and then it's actually homegrown. It was the opportunity zones. Opportunity zones, and it just blossomed. I mean, we were expecting to attract about a hundred billion dollars in ten years. We attracted seventy-five billion in just two years before. Amazing. COVID. So, so communities wanted this. They need this. Absolutely. And it's a, a wise thing to do. Don't just have the government go into more debt. There's plenty of money in the private sector, and you can use it in a way that advantages everybody. Is this administration continuing that? No. Did they, did they put a stop to it? Really, the Opportunity Zone isn't there anymore? Well, they didn't, they didn't stop it. They just kind of put it on the back burner. Well, when you say it was blossoming, they stopped watering it, maybe? Yeah, they, they they weren't particularly interested in getting these depressed areas out of depression. Because they have to control them, and you control them by keeping them down. Comple- completely correct. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson, The Perilous Fight is the brand new book, and, and I want you to go and check that out. I want to talk about a topic that you and I, I know in our heart, our heart of hearts agree on, but constitutionally I think we disagree. Let's talk about abortion. Abortion is the killing of a child. At conception, I believe that as a human being, I'm against abortion, period. You know, when the argument is rape, incest, and the life of the mother, even if you give them those three exceptions, that side still is pro-choice. They're never going to be pro-life. They're lying that that's the reason why they're pro-choice. They just want abortion on demand. You and I are wholeheartedly, we're Christian men, we're against abortion, period. But it's not in the Constitution. And I don't think that the federal government should have any purview over anything that's not in the Constitution, including gay marriage, including fill-in-the-blank, vaccines, you know, whatever. Um, so it's not in there. I think it's a state's issue. But, but I, from what I understand, you want a national ban. F- fill me in on how that would work constitutionally. No, that's not uh, true, actually. Uh, I'm okay, well, it's in my notes. I didn't hear you say it. It's in my notes. Yeah, I'm very much uh, in favor of what's been done Good. by, by relegating it to, to the states, to the people. Uh, where it can be talked about with their representatives. And, you know, when you really sit down and talk about an abortion, uh, a lot of people will actually change their mind. You know, I've operated on, on little babies that are 25, 26, 27 weeks gestation, the same age that people are re, re, reaching into the uterus and tearing them apart. Mm. Those babies need anesthesia. They have feelings. They're very much alive. They're just as much alive in there as they are outside of the womb. Yes. And these are the discussions that people need to have. And we need to be talking about alternatives for women who get pregnant. But we also need to be talking about advancing the science science to prevent uh, pregnancies where they're not wanted. Uh, Well, then you and I wholeheartedly agree. Now, I want an abortion ban in every state. I'd be fine with that. I just don't want the Constitution to overreach or the central government to overreach because as much as you and I might like them to do it on abortion, we'd hate them to do it on guns or something else. Uh, So so, so that makes sense. Go ahead. Some people have said, because I've said I'm for getting rid of abortion no matter where it's done, some people have taken that to think that I want a national ban on abortion. Well, thank you for clearing it up, because that was exactly what I was told, and I, I, I didn't think it sounded right, because I know that you're a textualist like I am. You and I both believe in the Constitution. If you want to amend it, we can do the amendment process, right. but constitutionally right now, abortion doesn't appear, neither does gay marriage, neither does a lot of things. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson, The Perilous Fight. Uh, Doc, that, well, that's the name of the book. Go and get it. Is it available right now, by the way? It's available everywhere. It came out uh, a few days ago. Beautiful. The, the Perilous Fight. Do we have a generation that would do The Perilous Fight today? I don't think so. 
Uh, I think a lot of people are waking up and are willing to do it. Courage, yeah. courage is what is needed. You can't be the land of the free if you're not the home of the brave. If I said define the perilous fight, what would you say? I would say the fight is on the elements that make us strong, and that is our families. And there's a tremendous fight against our families and our faith. Witness what happened to uh, Budker. Yes. Kicker. That verifies everything that I said in the book about the fight against the American family. The perilous fight. Go and get it. We, uh, Butker uh, dared say, go out and enjoy your careers, whatever career you choose. And I'm sure some of you really can't wait to go and be a wonderful homemaker. Without my wife, the homemaker, I wouldn't be who I am today. He literally gave her all the credit for his success. And somehow that was bad, Ben. And I give my wife great credit. to. I mean, she has a, a Yale degree, a Johns Hopkins degree. But she took care of the kids and raised them beautifully. They're all successful young men. As does my wife. So, I mean, it, it, what, what did he say that was so the antithesis of what these people want? Because he, he said family? They don't like the family because if you want to stop this nation, you have to destroy it from within. The best way to do that is to destroy the, the fundamental elements, which are our communities, which are composed of our families. It is uh, Dr. Ben Carson, former HUD secretary, incredible man. One last quick question for you. Heading into November, I think that Trump will not go to jail. Even if he's convicted of something, there'll be an appeal, and this thing will go well past uh, November. We already see Fannie Willis is a mess. Jack Smith's case is done. I think that he's going to make it through the legal challenges. Ben, are you afraid of what else they might try? Well, as I told uh, President Trump himself, I said, if God wants you in that position, there's nothing they can do to stop it, so don't worry. Perfect answer. It's Dr. Ben Carson. Doc, I appreciate the time as always. Go get his book. It's out right now. came out a few days ago, The Perilous Fight, and it's one that we face right now. This isn't about 1776. Doc, thanks a million. Appreciate you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right, brother. We're, We're back after this. Stay right here.